Hey everybody, welcome to Arcane Wednesday for February 10th, 2021. I am your host, DM Galavond. Alright, so tonight we are looking at a spell that hasn't been around terribly long. It came in in 4th edition, and it's one of those spells that carried over to 5th edition. And I'm really glad that it did, because it's it's kind of a fun spell. No matter whether you're the DM or whether you're the players, it's kind of a fun spell to throw out there. And the spell is Crown of Madness. And we are going to go ahead and see how this spell looks in D&D. All right, so let's go ahead and uh, go over to the um, to the source books. We are going to take a look at um, at Fourth Edition Player's Handbook and see where Crown of Madness first came in. Uh, Crown of Madness was a spell that uh, first came in for the Warlock at level 5, and it was a, um, it was a daily uh, power there for them at, at level 5. And it says it causes an illusionary twisted crown to appear around the target's head, under its psychic assault, the enemy loses the ability to distinguish friend from foe. And you target a creature, and it makes a um, melee basic attack against one of its adjacent allies of your choice. A save will end. And um, it also deals 2d6 plus your charisma modifier damage to the person that gets the crown on it. And if you miss, it um, it gives them half damage. Now that's the way it worked in um, in fourth edition. And a lot of this uh, a, a lot of this stuff on the miss half damage, uh, that was something that they did for uh, daily powers in um, in fourth edition to a large extent. Because you could only do those once per day. And they kind of wanted it to be something where even if you failed at it, you would have some sort of effect. It, it would not be as good as if you made it, but uh, it would have some sort of a, like incidental effect. Um, but again, it's kind of weird because it just it deals damage directly to one person, gets them to make one attack, and then it's done. But I like the way they brought it into 5th edition, because 5th edition, it's even a little bit better. 5th edition, 2nd level, casting time is 1 action, and a range of 120 feet, only verbal and somatic components, and it lasts for up to a minute. And um, it's a wisdom save, uh, or they become charmed by you for the duration, and while the target is charmed, a twisted crown of jagged iron appears on its head and a madness glows in its eyes. And the charmed target must use its action before moving on each of its turns to make a melee attack against a creature other than itself that you mentally choose. Target can act normally on its turn if you choose no creature or if none are within its reach. So this is a... Um, this is a thing where situationally you want to be careful about when you when you cast it because they need to be adjacent to somebody that you would want them to attack. So you don't want to put this on their head when they are adjacent to one of your allies. Um, you want to ideally put it on its head when they are adjacent to one of their own allies. Um, so maybe you could use this like... Uh, against enemies that have like pack tactics like um, you know it seems kind of cruel to use this against really low level things like kobolds but uh, kobolds have the pack tactic feature and um, that means that 
you know, you, they always like to get adjacent to each other so that they can get advantage on their attacks against an opponent. Well, when they gang up on an opponent, that's a perfect time to put a Crown of Madness on one of them and then turn one of them on the other ones. Um, so, um, on your subsequent turns, you must use your action to maintain control over the target or the spell ends. Also, the target can make a wisdom saving throw at the end of e each of its turns. On a success, the spell ends. So, y you have a... Depending on how long they are within the range of a... Um, of a... Uh, of a valid target, uh, you can try to keep this going for several rounds up to a full minute. Now, they're also charmed. So, um, you can kind of take that charmed, uh, 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 that charmed, uh, take advantage of that charmed condition uh, to sort of influence what they do. Because a charmed creature can't attack the charmer um, or target the charmer with harmful abilities or magical effects. So it's not going to be attacking you while it's charmed. And the charmer also has advantage on any ability check to interact socially with the creature. So you could use a persuasion check, which, base, which is based off your charisma, or, you know, an intimidation check or something like that. Say, hey, go attack that guy. And if it fails, or, or if you succeed on that, um, on, you know, either intimidating it or in persuading it to go and um, attack a person that you want, then it can use its normal action to go and do that. Uh, so there is some leeway. You do have some control, but it's not guaranteed you're going to do that. It's only if there is um, a target you want it to attack that's already right next to it, then um, that's when it will use, uh, that's when, it, when that has the most effect. And of course, if you put it on, like a beefy thing, like an ogre. Uh, if you have two ogres and they're right next to each other and you put the crown of madness on one ogre, uh, then it's going to turn and start beating the hell out of the other ogre and the other ogre will probably turn and start beating the crap out of the first ogre. And so they will, um, you know, as long as that charm lasts, uh, they will uh, be able to continue uh, you know, you can continue kind of getting both of those guys maybe out of the fight uh, or, you know, the one out of the fight until you can take it down. And then the charmed one, um, once the rest of your party starts attacking it, well, it's probably going to break the charm. But by that time, it'll be engaged, uh, hopefully with your with your allies. And in 5th edition, instead of just warlocks, you know how bards, sorcerers, warlocks, wizards, and the Oathbreaker paladins that get this crown of madness. So this is kind of a fun spell. I like it. It, um, it spices things up. If you're, a, uh, if you're a DM, it's fun to throw that out there at your party every now and then, especially if you have a, a uh, powerful... Um, melee character who always is in the habit of protecting uh, some of the casters and you can <laughs> you can throw that out there against them and of course for the for the players it's very fun to throw this out at a monster that's on the battlefield and just sort of cause chaos uh, on the dm side um, of the battlefield so all right that's crown of madness hey thanks everybody for watching Please uh, like the chan or subscribe to the channel, like the video, sh uh, share the video, click the post notification bell so that you get notified every time new content drops. Look down in the um, description and you'll see all the ways you can follow me on social media and where to find the live streams that I do four days a week over on my Twitch channel. All right. Thank you so much. Take care. We hope we will see you back here next week on, uh, on Arcane Wednesday.
and we will talk to you later. Good night, everybody. Bye.